So our next speaker <clears throat> is a person that I have great privilege and honor in introducing to you. Uh, she is the CEO of Ruckus Wireless, which went public not too long ago. I have the honor of being on the board of Ruckus Wireless, and despite that, she still talks to me. Uh, Selena is also a legend. Uh, she has been one of the most successful uh, entrepreneurs, a serial entrepreneur in the Valley. And uh, sometimes we look at her and say, gee, I wonder why you're doing this, Selena. And it's because she has so much drive. And I think you're going to see that as she comes up here. Selena? Thank you, Mohan. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. It's great to be back. And uh, each time I'm, I speak here, I see a bigger crowd. So uh, great job. Uh, so today, I want to talk about public Wi-Fi, not just carrier Wi-Fi. Uh, it's not quite the same as uh, I'm seeing more and more. A lot of public venues are deploying Wi-Fi themselves. Um, but before I start, I, I'd like to uh, give you an introduction to Rutgers. Uh, we are a pioneer in carrier class Wi-Fi. Um, but again, carrier class Wi-Fi is not just for carriers. We actually sell to both carriers and enterprises. So for example, Flavio this morning mentioned that uh, City of San Francisco, the Market Street Network is supplied by Ruckus, as well as uh, the, uh, all the parks in San Francisco. We also uh, are a supplier to City of San Jose, as well as a number of airports, um, transportation hubs, uh, shopping malls, and in general, a lot of public venues, and uh, we are a top lead, uh, a, uh, uh, a leader in hospitality Wi-Fi, uh, as well as uh, education K to 12 Wi-Fi. So, public Wi-Fi uh, is really this is uh, I see it uh, according to Jeffrey Moore's uh, crossing the chasm terms. It is entering a tornado phase. Um, it is a perfect storm just brewing, and uh, I'm going to tell you why. You know, users, venues, operators, and ecosystem, they are all favoring Wi-Fi. Um, you know, since when does the government work for you? Now the FCC wants to keep wanting to add more spectrum to unlicensed. So it's a great thing. And I'm going to talk about the, these factors one by one. Uh, users, I mean, we are all pretty addicted to Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, we want Wi-Fi more than we want coffee. Uh, but more than that, we are getting addicted to public Wi-Fi. 81% of internet users admitted to using Wi-Fi hotspots. And 71% of them had used one in the last month. Venues. For a long time, you know, you find free Wi-Fi or public Wi-Fi in hotels, in university campuses, in um, airports. But now we're seeing Wi-Fi pop up everywhere. Uh, you know, all the shopping retail shops, uh, not just coffee shops, but uh, in you know even restaurants like Ruth Chris. Um, we are seeing Wi-Fi popping up in cities. Uh, you know, some of you may remember five, six years ago, there's this uh, Metro Wi-Fi thing that, that died a brilliant death. Um, well, it's coming back, and now it's no longer called Metro Wi-Fi or not even Metro Wi-Fi 2.0. Now it's Smart City Wi-Fi. And it's Smart City Wi-Fi because it is built not just for public access, but to also support a lot of the uh, to to be to support the infrastructure requirements for a city for a lot of uh, smart city applications, including IoT. Uh, we are seeing, you know, also commercially, uh, some cities like New York City, the famous RFP on um, you know the phone booth project, right? Cities are trying to monetize um, their sites and uh, work with uh, the, the private sector in monetizing Wi-Fi. So this is, uh, from a, a venue perspective, uh, there is a race going on in grabbing the, the, the best venues, the most uh, frequented venues between operators and also between uh, venues themselves. Carriers, 
service providers are definitely uh, more and more embracing Wi-Fi, and the most aggressive among them are the cable operators. Um, you know, it's very, you see all the advertisements out here that uh, Comcast this year will have 8.5 million hotspots uh, built out, and I think Liberty Global talk about 2.5 million, and this was just uh, started, I think, a year plus ago. Um, and obviously, a lot of these hotspots are home spots, but in terms of coverage, you know, you can see from the heat, from the uh, location map that it's starting to really become um, to gain critical mass to become very relevant to a consumer like myself. Um, also, I think another thing that is really uh, powerful about what the MSOs are doing is to privately link up MSO networks and share hotspot footprint. You know, hotspot is useful to a consumer only if it is present in places that, that uh, the consumer goes to. And uh, by con com combining footprint, the cable Wi-Fi, the top five cable operators, now has uh, advertised you know, more than 250,000 public hotspots, not even count counting the, the home spots. And then now you, these guys are roaming with uh, Liberty Global in Europe, roaming with KDDI and Taiwan Mobile in Asia. And this network can become quite powerful if you cover enough footprint and you cover all the important places, you know, it doesn't, the only places that uh, Wi-Fi can't claim to, to, to support are the, mo are the freeways, right, the mobile applications. Otherwise, this can become competition certainly for LTE overage. MNOs, MNOs are also aggressively deploying Wi-Fi, but in a more focused manner, they really pick locations where the density is so high that they cannot afford not to have Wi-Fi. To show you uh, an example of how powerful Wi-Fi can be for 3G offload, Ruckus uh, provided the Wi-Fi network for, um, for the four operators, uh, mobile operators in Brazil during the, the World Cup. Um, we cover a number of stadiums, including this, uh, the biggest, Maricana, where the final game uh, was held. Look at the traffic mix, okay? This, was, uh, this map was given to us anonymously by one of the operators. Um, look at the traffic mix. The, the rightmost bar is, uh, is the final match. Now, there's a lot of talks about small cell, and I certainly get all kinds of questions about whether Wi-Fi will, become, will continue to be relevant uh, with small cells, and of course, you know, um, as John Donovan at AT&T have talked about, Wi-Fi is part of small cell. Um, however, the, from what we have seen in the current rollout, um, certainly I don't see small cell threatening Wi-Fi. Um, and I'm not quite sure in the first rollout, Wi-Fi is going to actually play a big role in, in small cell. Let me explain that. First of all, I think that in general, the um, LTE small cell, even 3G small cell is rolling out much more slowly than expected. Um, and, you know, no surprise, uh, site acquisition is a major challenge, both outdoors and indoors. And if you think about where, if you want to offload traffic, if you want to densify, where, where's mobile traffic coming from? 75% of it is coming from indoors. And today, what I've seen is that most of the rollout is focused outdoors. And even, um, you know, outdoors, indoors, I think other than the technology, there's a lot of uh, obstacles in front. Part site acquisition, backhaul, but also the deployment itself. Today, every installation is a truck roll. So given that kind of operation, you're talking about thousands, maybe tens of thousands of sites a year. Um, that certainly is not enough for densification to keep up with user demand. Oh, and expensive. I mean, right now, you know, the small cells are not really small cells. They are smaller cells. Um, if you really want to densify, you're going to have to come, you know, to hundreds of dollars, right, to Wi-Fi type of pricing. And then the whole integrated multi-technology small cell, you know, Ruckus is even a player. We supply Wi-Fi technology to some of the, the small cells um, that are uh, going to market now in this generation. 
the, the, the challenge I've seen is that um, all the technologies, integrated technologies, uh, they look at Wi-Fi as just a bolt-on, just, you know, let me put a check mark on it. And so we supply Wi-Fi technology to other vendors, and what we see is that they want a module from us. There's certainly not a lot of integration, and the challenge here is that cellular and Wi-Fi, even in small cells, have different propagation properties, and the Wi-Fi cell size is smaller. How the hell are people going to design a network? Um, also, there's really not a multi-vendor standard, certified standard for um, roaming between, wi or handoff, you call it, handoff between Wi-Fi and cellular. And so, if the cell sizes are different, you're in a Wi-Fi cell, you walk over past the edge of the Wi-Fi cell, what happens? Does your connection stop? Or you're going to have to have some kind of a proprietary thing that you load on the phone in order to roam because there's no multi-vendor standard? So there are a lot of these issues that haven't been resolved. Not to talk about, you know, Wi-Fi's upgrade cycle. I mean, we're now on to 11 AC and uh, all of the development that went on for the current generation of small cells, that 11N. Um, and so between you know, LTE, Wi-Fi, and uh, the, the technology cycles are not the same. So I personally think that it would be a challenge for enterprises to allow an operator to come in and say, I'm going to give you a small cell that has Wi-Fi and 3G and 4G in it. I mean, most of them already have their own Wi-Fi. And even if they don't, a hotel, Wi-Fi is the number th one thing that they get dinged on on customer satisfaction, on guest satis satisfaction. They're certainly not going to let a service provider say, I will supply you Wi-Fi, not knowing what that Wi-Fi is and where it's from and how well it works. So I think these issues need to get resolved. Not that they cannot be resolved, but certainly the current generation of small cells are not touching them. In the meantime, on the Wi-Fi side, the user experience for Wi-Fi continues to improve. And, you know, everybody has talked about Hotspot 2.0. We had a very successful, I heard a successful demonstration here. Um, and so certainly, you know, the, the, the getting connected to a Wi-Fi network is, is becoming more and more like cellular. But there are other things that are improving the user experience. You know, 11AC is going to add a lot more capacity to Wi-Fi, to a Wi-Fi access point. So now, with more capacity, you know, users theoretically should get better performance until, of course, you fill up that capacity. But, you know, Wi-Fi has continued to scale and AC is going to make the networks um, perform a lot better for, for, uh, for users. Wi-Fi calling, Dixon talked about that earlier. You know, Wi-Fi historically, people think about it as a data technology and a data technology that is used when you're sitting down. Well, certainly, um, you know, yesterday I was at the San Jose, um, I just landed at San Jose International and I was walking down the, how many of you have used the new San Jose airport? I mean, that thing is long and there's no conveyor belt, you know, so I was walking down typing the whole time and I was connected on Wi-Fi the whole time I was walking. Um, and now, you know, so you say that's data. TCP will recover all these issues, uh, uh, drop packets or, or, or misconnections, and, and you won't know it. Well, now with Wi-Fi calling, you know, it can become quite powerful. You can really now use Wi-Fi. I mean, think about when you are in public, why not use Wi-Fi unless you're driving? Then the, the, the fourth thing that, is, uh, that I'm really excited about is this thing called uh, BSS transition management. So most of you have experienced this problem with uh, your handset getting stuck on an access point and you see the forever circle that just hangs your handset unless you turn off Wi-Fi. Well, that's, there's actually a uh, standard um, with uh, 802.11 um, and a, uh, that, that has been defined on how to resolve this. It's called BSS Transition uh, Management and it uses 802.11v. Um, this though, unfortunately, had not been implemented on the handset until now with iOS 8. Uh, Apple has uh, 
implemented this. Uh, we've tested this with them uh, for a long time before iOS 8 uh, was announced. Um, and so over time, this also, this problem will be resolved. And you know, I just got the new iPhone, the battery, um, the, the power utilization is much better on the iPhone. So I see a lot of issues of uh, people turning off Wi-Fi going away. And the ecosystem, you know, you look at, we talk about Hotspot 2.0 roaming, right? You, and you saw the demonstration here between San Francisco, San Jose. Um, I heard that Tower Stream is also part of the demonstration, um, the NG, NGN demonstration here. Um, so the ecosystem is certainly building for Hotspot 2.0. And the powerful thing about Hotspot 2.0's roaming is that it's not just between carriers. Enterprises can also enter to the fray. So think about all these venue Wi-Fi's that are being built, and you know, among the venue um, enterprises, if they can formulate some kind of a business partnership, and they use Hot Hotspot 2.0 to link up their hotspots, think about how attractive that can be. Another complaint about wi public Wi-Fi is the business case. People assume that it's free. Well, free is not free. For the longest time, you know, people, you, you, you sign off the rights to your eyeball when you sign up to a free Wi-Fi network. And as you uh, have seen, you know, 81% of internet users are willing to do that. Um, that eyeball, you know, for a long time, people talk about advertisement using that eyeball. And just add impression itself is not enough to really generate revenue. But now the, the, the utilization of that eyeball has changed to um, a business model that, that uses analytics to build a relationship with the owner of that eyeball. So venues now want to know where that, where that user is, where, uh, what that user is, is uh, using on the phone, what kind of phone the user is uh, using. And you know, they have a number of applications for it. Um, obviously, the, 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 the one that's, you know, most cliche, cliche is that if you are standing in front of a cereal rack, uh, rack you get a uh, promotion coupon on the cereal. That really is not quite the, the usage of uh, Wi-Fi location. But, but you can see that there are a number of applications that can use that analytics information. And if you can effectively use that analytics to generate a commercial transaction, that's the business model. That's the monetization. Um, so I'll give you an example. We uh, recently uh, uh, supply Wi-Fi for an, a dozens of train stations in, uh, in, in, in uh, one of the, the major uh, cities in Asia. And the Wi-Fi was uh, primarily used to provide public access as a service at the train station. Um, but also, the, the, the station operators are using our location-based services to track the dwell time to track the queue size of people queuing up for subway. And they're using that information to optimize their train schedule. And in addition, they're also taking that crowd movement information and in real time reflecting that in their um, user app, in their transportation app, to help their commuters with figuring out how they want to do the commute. So it doesn't always have to be coupon. You know, different verticals can use the, the user analytics in a very useful way. And, some, and you don't even have to track specific users. You can be just looking at the footfall moving and, uh, and, and, and use that information um, in a number of uh, use cases. Another example of uh, how um, Wi-Fi business model um, is put together is uh, a lot of MSPs now um, they are in combining Wi-Fi in an NFV architecture with other services, other infrastructure services like security. Um, certainly Hotspot 2.0 roaming, I see that as a potential, for example, to enable enterprises to form loyalty programs. Um, they're using analytics and they're providing that as a managed service from the cloud to venue owners. Um, that's you know, another new way of uh, uh, monetization that we have seen. So again, um, 
it's a perfect storm for public Wi-Fi. I think that the support coming from both operators and the private sector is going to make Wi-Fi public access a, a very, very important um, infrastructure that uh, is an important um, uh, augmentation to the current cellular um, wireless connectivity. So thank you, and we don't take questions. Okay. <laughs>